Sensei John Small, and today's video is about developing your striking weapons. A lot of people hurt their hands when striking, and I think there are two reasons for that. They haven't developed their weapons uh, well, and they don't target precisely. Uh, and by that, I mean, for example, I think a lot of people may think in terms of slugging the head as opposed to being very specific in their targeting on the head, such as the nose. Or something. Uh, a lot of different hand weapons. Uh, go to the dojo, learn about these things. Uh, this is about just helping you understand a little bit more about how to condition these things. Let me start uh, Start with the, the sake of the fist. This is the most common weapon. You can bypass the need of needing to condition the fist uh, simply by using a field palm. This is a really good strike for beginners who haven't really developed striking skills because what it does is it allows your, your strike to work with bones that are already lined up. And that's the idea here. You're really looking to line bones up so that they're working together and supporting each other in a strike. And in that way, your strike is strong, your hand isn't weak, and then your hand doesn't collapse uh, under the pressure of the, the force of the blow. So looking at the fist, the idea, of course, is getting the bones lined up down the length of the arm from the two knuckles. My point of impact, I'm thinking, is most ideally on that point of two knuckles there. And uh, so perhaps you can see coming into the heavy bag just like that. A great way to begin to condition the fist like that is just some push-ups. Doing push-ups on your fist. If, if regular push-ups are too difficult for you at first, you can just start on your knees. But I want to make this illustration real clear I'm, I'm bringing the board out so I can show you that what it's like on a hard surface you can see I want to really get on just those two knuckles right there that's where I'm looking to project my force down through the board so two knuckle push-ups on the fists however many you feel like you want to do the activity uh, is a great way to both help to harden up the bones and the knuckles a little bit, as well as teach you how to really strengthen that fist in a way that it's lined up. Uh, from there, uh, a rig like this, this is just a block of wood with some rope wrapped around it, is a good way. And you don't want to think in terms of trying to hammer this thing at all. This is just about conditioning. You're just looking to harden the bones with, with uh, something like this. So just, just a small little hitting on it. A lot of repetition. Whack that 50 times or so. Uh, and while we're on this subject, uh, for all of your striking weapons, I'm not going to get into the details of all, all of these, uh, such as your back fist. It's a great way to help to condition your back fist up. Uh, a lot of times I'll just sit here and kind of hold it steady whack it a bunch of times, or just practice kind of catching it on a spin, trying to keep it straight. Uh, some back fist training. Uh, likewise, use your wrists in a striking manner like that, hardening those things up. Uh, you have your uh, your tetsui. This is a this is a naturally good weapon for hitting a harder surface. Anyways, you have a nice soft padded area on your on your hammer fist here uh, but you can develop it some on this as well this is a real good tool for developing your shoot up uh, your edge hand uh, the karate chop um, the, the key in the shoot -o, again is making sure that the bones are lined up you don't want to you don't want to be hitting something with a weak hand uh, because things are just going to collapse under the force and you're going to hurt your hand so getting those bones lined up straight so that they're all supporting each other. And the, and the road there is putting the hands together and then pulling the fingers apart that you're keeping your hands together. And you have a good, strong shooter. And, and with this, you have the, the edges, the corners of this, this thing. So it's a nice way to work on that shooter and developing the, the strength and the power in that. But again, you're not trying to, ha you don't just start hammering on the thing. You need to work your way up, like with most everything. 
So uh, this is a great, a great training aid for really starting to harden those bones up. Uh, once you've done that, you can move along to something like this. Uh, this is just kind of a mock, mocky war sort of board I made. And uh, again, it's a great way to help condition the, the knuckles up some. I'm going to bring the camera on over and let you take a closer look at that for a moment. I want you to see what's going on here. Uh, where it's slotted. I've, I've slotted it down through so as to give it Give it some flexibility when it gets gets struck. It's got give. I don't want it to be solid I want to allow some give so that my knuckles aren't just coming up against a, a real hard stop there So uh, Moving back to moving back to the, to the safe uh, and the heavy bag uh, a lot of what I've covered up to now is, is talking about conditioning, uh, lining the bones up, hardening the bones up. Uh, the other point I made was about being specific in your targeting. Uh, when it gets into heavy bag working out, a lot of people use gloves on a heavy bag. I don't. Um, I don't sit here and hammer the thing for two hours typically either. Uh, but I think a lot of the reason for gloves, a lot of people tend to just really wail on the thing a lot without really pinpointing their, their, their focus and their accuracy uh, and that tends to lead to more glancing type blows and those are the kinds of things that rip your knuckles up a little bit more when it comes to heavy bag we'll do another video on this but for this particular subject uh, one of the things I think that really helps in learning how to pinpoint your focus and your targeting is practice striking in a way where you're just just touching the thing you're really looking to focus your weapon into your point of contact, but you're not hitting. You're just, you're learning to control the thing. I still have extension left in my arm, but I want to stop it and control it right on that point of, of contact. In a manner, something like that. And, and in developing that kind of control, you're training yourself to really pinpoint your targeting uh, as well. And then, as you get into hitting the heavy bag, this is where you can really begin to uh, appreciate having your wrists being strong and your bones lined up. Um, if, if you have, if these aren't lined up, if, if it's a little caught this way, for example, and you strike, your wrist is potentially going to bend that way. As you practice the heavy bag, you'll begin to feel and know and understand that. Uh, so it's a great place for you to really begin to focus on how to have those bones lined up and feeling the force of the energy into the strike, uh, how it affects your hands. Uh, this heavy bag is a, is, is a real old school kind of heavy bag. A lot of the stuff is just settled down here, so it's real, real hard down below. It's got practically no give. It's a big heavy thing here, a bit softer up top. Uh, so it works well for me as far as uh, what I was just speaking of getting down low and doing these low strikes is a place where I don't have much give in this heavy bag at all. So I can really feel what it takes to hammer hard. Um, much softer up top. It doesn't really give me as much of that effect of needing to strengthen my weapon and my wrist to make sure that those bones are lined up real good. So uh, in closing, Punching is not a, a novice exercise. It's not a beginner activity. Uh, you really need to train and develop your, your fists, your sakens, in order to be able to use them effectively in a way where you're not hurting yourself and, and hurting your own hands in the process. Uh, these are some of the methods in which you can get there. So, I will wrap it up with that. I hope this has been helpful and beneficial. Domo arigato. Sayonara.